I'm back on my cult classic kick. You know, movies some people love, but most people go, what do you mean they're penguins fighting in Vietnam? And the answer this time is definitely cocaine, but we'll get there. Heavy Metal. It's a magazine. Or, well, it's more of a comic book, really, released by subscription. It focuses on adult content, violence, nudity, you know, everything teenagers are looking for in a magazine. The magazine's been running since 1977, but it didn't really hit its heyday until the early to mid-80s. I mean, look at it. This thing just screams 80s. Surfing is like sex. Surfers try to get that perfect wave. That perfect woman. Oof, if that's not a bad omen for what's coming. No dive. So, while they were writing the 80s cocaine-fueled haze of their heyday, they had the brilliant idea to make an animated movie set to heavy metal music and featuring stories from their magazine. Thus, Heavy Metal. Yeah, apparently cocaine doesn't help with names. Heavy Metal starts off pretty generic, you know? A spaceship drops a convertible to Earth, and then the astronaut drives home and gives his daughter the, the sum of all evil as a present which melts him and then starts telling his daughter about all the different people across time and space that it fucks with. Yeah, real hero's journey here. Like the magazine itself, the movie is an anthology, housing multiple unrelated stories. This opening scene serves as an anchor that the narrative can return to after each story, and an introduction to the root of all evil, which, other than gratuitous nudity, is really the only through line here. The disparate stories range from sci-fi to comedy to horror to noir, and tend to vary heavily in both writing and animation quality. Apparently they contracted multiple animation studios to work each story in an effort to lower production time, but by spreading their animation out like that, the animation directing came in a bit thin. Which has some, uh, interesting effects? Animation quality ranges from good He-Man episode to Zelda CDR game. Oh, come on. Not again. And they relied heavily on rotoscoping in a couple scenes, which can make them look a bit odd. And in their flagship story, the combat is just like super slow for no particular reason. And the humor is a bit outdated. But mixed marriages just don't work. But considering this is the 80s, and how edgy they're trying to be, it could have been I way worse. I, I just lost my papers or something. Goddamn legal aliens. Honestly though, what you're here for is the heavy metal. The music, not the comic book or the movie. The soundtrack is solid. You got Journey, Stevie Nicks, Devo, Black Sabbath. It's good. But there's a quote from an insanely prolific Italian composer, Ennio Morricone. Good music cannot save a bad film, but even bad music cannot ruin a good film. I mean, it's not really a direct quote. I mean, he said it in fucking Italian or something, but he's got a point. And the music is blasting and the art isn't trying to scare you away. This is a decent film. But once the backing track quiets down and the characters speak... Give it to me. The lock knows mine. It's mine. It's mine. Don't you take it. It's mine. I don't want a lock knows. It's my lock now. It just comes off as rough or even amateurish. Maybe a good movie to make fun of with friends, or to put on in the background of a party as a conversation piece. Assuming everyone there is cool with a bit of gratuitous nudity. But this is not some lost gem buried under yo-yos and leg warmers. It's just 80s heavy metal culture boiled down into a 90 minute uncanny valley case study. In other words, interesting to some, off-putting to most. So, uh, I was supposed to do the... Winter 2021 season roundup today. Fell pretty behind on anime, so that's going to be two weeks late. I mean, I know those are like my least viewed videos, and the only person really holding me to this schedule is me. But I enjoy making those, so I'm going to do it. Uh, anyway, you know, subscribe for a video nobody wants to see.